I don't even know how this is turning out, but we'll get it. Bye guys! We're now standing in the very heart of the town of London. Everything around us, I mean everything. All these walls, all these buildings, and all these towers. Absolutely everything here was built to protect that town. We're in the fortress of the White Tower. Building commenced that town in the year 1078, 20 years to build that, under the direction of a man called Gundolf Beck, Bishop of Rochester. 92 feet high, big deal you might think. Please remember that's finished in the year 1098. The average height of building London rarely exceeds around 30 feet. This thing is three times as high, but more importantly, on a quarter of a mile from London, from City back there at London Bridge. For many years you come from the south, you've got to cross London Bridge, it's the only one. That's dominating the skyline, it's stamped Norman authority of this city. Kings and Queens of England lived on the top of that tower until the year 1603. James I of England, who was James VI of Scotland, that's my terrain on the top floor. So, Kings and Queens of the top floor, Knights of Elizabeth had to serve and some retainers below that. Below ground, where there's no light, it wasn't needed, is another chamber. Down there is where the dungeons and torture chambers were once located. Down there we kept an implement called the rack. The rack, ingenious but simple. It turns small people into tall people. That's what it's designed to do. But to do that, it would dislocate, shatter, break every single joint in the body. What's it related to flat your back? Ropes will change as you wish if you've had some rewound in opposite directions. You got taller. Pain, excruciating. Down there, terrifying. Down there today, still terrifying. Now if you reckon you're hard enough, go down there. Walk around the basement and eventually you will come face to face with a gift shop. <laughs> then we'll see how hard you are. <laughs> Over here, from the also racks, cabinets, automaticals, all the good stuff. Back down these steps on the left hand side, see a yow sign that says torture at the top. Down those steps, you'll find the implements of torture. And now, at the moment, 500 years of armour, the Royal Arms display. Henry VIII's armour is in there, go see it, it's magnificent. Entry, south, exit, north. We all agree now that one is Tower Bridge. Look halfway, you see a grass there. That's the <coughs> South Tower. Well, that's where the Tower Raven is. In the good old days, we had thousands of ravens here. And this is the two top of the church. The top of the White Tower is adorned by four turns. Three square, but that one, look, is round. Now, in there, the Lord Observatory is established. Up there are a bunch of interesting blokes. Looking at stars and planets and that good stuff. Well, all these ravens flying around and then messing on the equipment to support the view. Believe it or not, they complained to the king, Charles II. The king said, get rid of the ravens. Then somebody reminds of the legend. If the ravens ever leave the tower, the White Tower will crumble and the British monarchy will end. Uh -oh. Serious business. <laughs> Charles II very superstitious. Everybody was. This guy was super superstitious. Now because of this, we had two disasters. The plague of 1665 and the Great Fire of London is in 1666. The king did not want a third disaster. So, he wrote a royal decree, appointing a raven mass on the body of the Roman warriors. Pay him extra money each week, and still do today, to feed and look after the ravens. But the ravens' numbers were culled to just six. Today, we normally keep eight. Always good to have two on the bench. <laughs> now during the day, six will be hopping around somewhere, elevator wings clip not going anywhere. We always keep two safe down there in the cage. <clears throat> now in the wild, ravens live 12, maybe 15 years. But in the town, once had a raven who went by the name of James Crow. Now, ravens today have still got their own names, but James lived to the ripe old age of 44. Wow. Let me assure you guys, these ravens are very, very well looked after. Better looked after than certain things around here. <laughs> and I'm nowhere near 44. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> That's where the kings and queens lived. Behind me here, some of them actually died. This grass area is known as Tower Green. 
If you live here, you're village green. There, a small glass memorial. This marks the site of the private scaffold. Executions, as the word suggests, in private. <laughs> Not a public show on the hill. Very shortly I'll tell you you died here. Before that, a couple of words about the buildings. Look down to that corner is a large black and white, perfectly preserved Tudor building known as the Queen's House. <coughs> Queen's House, Anne Boleyn's wedding present from Henry VIII, but she never used it. By the time that was finished, she was finished. <laughs> they give it to the officers in the town, they say only important prisoners will use this. The fifth wife of King Henry VIII, Queen Catherine, had that same prison prior to her execution. Other important prisoners have included William Penn, the inventor of Pennsylvania. In more recent times, in 1941, Rudolf Hess, deputy to Adolf Hitler. Held now between the 17th and 21st of May, 1941. Today, though, home of the constable of the tower and his family. Houses of the Blue Doors in the side are homes of my Yellowwater colleagues and their families. The tower behind me is the Beecham Tower, state prison near the time of the Tudors. The tall building there is the house of the Tower Doctor. Now, if we can't help you, don't panic. Right next door lives the Tower Chaplain. If he can't fix you, he'll dispatch you. <laughs> Parching Arms, Chapel Royal, Oxford Street, and Vigla, our destination. Very sure. On sandstone colour building, that's the Waterloo block. Today's the home of the Crown Jewels and Royal Regalia. Ladies, I know you're in this show, you guys, you things. So if you do finish in the chapel, make a beeline for that rather large clock. The entrance to the Crown Jewels is directly beneath. Right, that's enough talking about buildings for now. Let's spend a few minutes talking about blood, guts, and execution. Don't away. <laughs> First person executed here. Second wife of King Henry VIII, Queen Anne Boleyn. Now we only hold her here for 18 days, the last 18 in 1536. Then tried on charges of adultery, incest, witchcraft and various other crimes. Terrified the blocking acts. She said, if condemned, if, let me be executed in the French manner. The French used a two-handed sword. We summoned an executioner all the way across from France. Don't be a cynic. Always remember. That executioner was summoned from France three days before the trial even started. Did she ever stand a chance? Condemned to death, she knelt there. The executioner stood behind her and with one stroke, he removed her head. It was so quick and so precise. The public records of the event clearly state, when the executioner lifts her head, there was a sharp intake of breath from the crowd. <laughs> sharp intake of breath from the whole crowd. <laughs> no idea why did that happen. Nah. The way did they do it? Because with her head held aloft, her eyes were still moving from the person. Out loud to an equate today for around 28 seconds. Out loud, she was still the sight of the prayers. There that dawned on her, she was dead. Five years later, she turned to Margaret, part of Countess of Salisbury. Elderly aunt of Henry VIII, no crime, no trial, the problem was so. Grown up, now Roman Catholic Cardinal Reginald Paul. <coughs> Cardinal Paul was safe in Rome and saying lots of nasty things about Henry. Henry tried to kill him. The assassins all failed. By this point, the king's head wound up. The only way Henry could appease himself is to execute the cardinal's mother. 67 years old. Following year 1542, the axe fell twice on the same day. The victims were the fifth wife of King Henry VIII, Queen Catherine Howard, and her lady in waiting, Jane, the Viscountess of Oxford. Catherine's crimes, well documented, you all know it association with other men. Her lady in waiting knew all about it, but she didn't tell the king. That would cost that woman her life. Was Catherine Howard blindly stupid, or was she blindly in love? We'll never know. Catherine Howard stood there, and she said, I have come here to die the Queen of England. But I would much rather die the wife of the only man I have ever truly loved Thomas 
Culpa. You can imagine how that went down. <laughs> Everyone stood here must have gone. <laughs> Not sure how to said that. If Thomas Culpep was here, I'm pretty sure he would have gone. <laughs> He's not here. He's been executed. Sent to tongue drawn, disemboweled, and quartered. That was community. The king said, like him. He saved me from that adulterous queen. None of that business. Just chop his head off. And we can't do it here. Not a noble bird. <coughs> they took him all the way to Tyburn. Tyburn today, you must know, is mine. 12 years past, February 1554. Next execution, 17-year-old Lady Jane Grey. Uncrowned Queen of England for nine days, she's in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's five women. We do not send women to the hall, especially Queens of England. We did it here quietly with so-called dignity. But during that era, the last person to die here is a man, the year 1601. His name was Robert Devereux. Now he's second Earl of Essex, he's close to Elizabeth I, too close. Tried for treason, sentenced to death. She liked him. She said, OK, I accept this decision, but you will allow this man the dignity in the tower of a private execution. Not out there, in front of a baying mob. I'm sure that cheered him up on the air. <laughs> there were six official executions during that era in this place. The execution may have thought that the bloodbath was on the head. But, you die on the hill, you die here, it doesn't matter. Today your bones lie beneath or within the Chapel Royal of St. Peter at Newton. Before we go there, guys, on a very serious note, it is still a Christian place of worship. There will gentlemen if, but only if, houses, please remove the plate. Inside there, there's no eating, drinking, smoking, photography, or sound can be fitted at any time. If, in your possession, you have an instrument of Satan, known as a mobile or cell phone. <laughs> please take this chance to turn it off. At least, please, turn to vibrate, silence or stun. Do not let it go off in the chapel. If it goes off in the chapel, you'll die <laughs> of embarrassment. <laughs> Some of you are lucky enough to be under the age of 21. If you turn your mobile phone off around 15 minutes, your heart will continue to beat. <laughs> Give it a go. Through the door, small step, that big, trust me. Been there a billion years. Every year it trips up a million visitors. You're all now aware of it. Ladies, good advice, ignore it, not a drama, I'll be at the door. Ladies, if you trip over that step, I will attempt to invest your fall down to that hard floor. A grasping hole of whatever part of your anatomy happens to fall into my trap. Yeah. You'll be lying in these strong arms. We are going to look at each other what you will think is a very inappropriate amount of time. Then I'll stick you on your feet. Gentlemen, trip, it hurts. <laughs> Everyone please, everybody please, watch that very small. <laughs> Alright, no photos in there. I think we're done recording this for now. We'll get to the next thing uh, later. We're going to finish off the tour not recording it because you got to see it for yourself, the rest of it. Later! More, more fence monkeys. Alright, so we. Finish the tour. Oh, let me zoom out. Yeah. <sighs> so we finished the tour. We went in to see the crown jewels, which is amazing, by the way. Uh, gold. Everything. Everything's gold and diamonds and other gems in there. It's freaking crazy. Um... We're gonna go get some other stuff here in the Tower of London. I got a shot with the trebuchet and such. Uh, tour's good. Tour's worth worth looking at. Church as well. I can't take pictures inside the church, unfortunately. It is also starting to rain a bit here, which is just lovely. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else we're gonna see here. We're gonna do, do some walkabout. Uh, what time is it? It is. 
right at 1.40 p.m., of course. And I think we'll, I might be able to showcase some of the like torture oh, museums. Uh, and I want to see the armory if it's still up somewhere, because that would be awesome. I love that kind of stuff.